Hello guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Amos from Symmetry Acoustics. Today's video, I'd like to share with you uh, some information uh, that relates to room acoustic signature or room frequency response vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the speaker frequency response. Now, when we talk about speaker frequency response or studio monitor's frequency response, uh, we're talking about the ability of the speaker to reproduce the sound as it was recorded without uh, coloring it from the lower end, mid frequency and high frequencies. And that's why uh, top engineers or those who are, have good budgets will go for the top of the line speakers, which are very expensive by the way, because these speakers are able to reproduce the sound as perfect as possible in terms of reproduction, uh, so that there's no uh, coloration in uh, uh, frequencies uh, that they produce. Now, let's talk about room acoustics uh, and how uh, acoustic frequency response of the room is important, because we want the speakers and the room to work together. If you take a speaker that is designed in near perfect acoustic environment and then you bring it into a room that is not that perfect then that's where the problem comes from because now uh, the, the room would want to work against us we want the room to work with us and not to cause distortion in the signal path that the speaker reproduces now what does room acoustic signature means or frequency response now room frequency response of a room means uh uh, the ability of that room not to color what we hear from the lower frequency to mid and high, just like as the speakers. So by that, we need to treat the room from low frequencies, mid frequencies, and high frequency so that it does not distort what we hear. We minimize distortion that is caused by the room. So how do we minimize distortion that is caused by the, by the room? Uh, the, the first and the most straightforward way is to... Uh, do acoustic treatment or, or apply acoustic treatment materials that are going to be able to absorb low frequencies, mid and high frequencies. But what if I told you the first thing to do is to arrange the room correctly? By that I mean uh, the orientation of the setup should be able to work also with us, not against us. So I have an example here that I want to share with you on how arrangement of the setup can affect how we hear the sound. So let's check this setup here. These are rectangular room you can see here. Uh, the orientation of the speakers uh, is facing the longest dimension of the room. So the speakers are firing towards the length of the room. And alongside here also, uh, let me share with you the frequency, uh, not really the frequency, but the um, RT60 or the reverb time uh, that we tested before and after the treatment and see what happens at the lower frequencies and the mid frequency and the high frequency in terms of RT60 decay time reduction. So check this out. Is the uh, decay time across the frequency spectrum you can see at the lower frequencies there's not so much reduction because of the size of the room and the dimensions uh, because also of the room modes and the standing waves which i'll share with you shortly also now if you change the room so that the speakers are firing towards the shortest dimension everything changes and let me show you how this is how the uh, rt60 looks after we change the speakers to face the shortest direction you can see uh, that the decay time is increased again towards the lowest frequency, which we don't want. We don't want a high decay time anywhere from high frequency to lower frequency. So if there's a way we can minimize that frequency, I mean the, the decay curve to, uh, to a bearable level, then that's what we want. So you can see if you set up the room in a way that it fires towards the length of the room, we are able to minimize the decay time drastically. But if we change the orientation of the room so that the speakers are facing the shortest dimension, that decay time toward the lower frequency increases again. Now, all this happens when the treatments are the same in this room. The treatments are the same, there's no, uh, there's no variation, only the, the, the change in setup. So that shows you that uh, before we treat the room, it's important to set up the room correctly so that we don't spend so much money. Because if we set that up the room wrongly, it doesn't matter how much you spend to treat, especially low frequencies because it will not be able to uh, to work because of the way they were set, we are setting up the room. Now, uh, another thing that you can do to, uh, to a more practical approach would be to uh, look at the driver size we are using. Suppose you're in a smaller room, like most of these home studios are 12 feet by 13 feet uh, averagely, or 12 by 12 or 13 by 13 feet. That's still a very small room. So if you place a very large uh, uh, studio monitor inside there, it will produce excess bass that the room will not be able to accommodate because these uh, low frequencies need a, a longer, um, I mean, a dimension for the wavelength to be able to travel. So the more you introduce a larger speaker into a smaller room, you build up a pressure that it doesn't matter how much treatment uh, you put there, low treatment, low cost, uh, acoustic uh, management treatment you put there, you will not be able to treat those kind of frequencies. So a more practical uh, solution also is, uh, apart from rearranging the room appropriately, uh, ensure you use studio monitors that are of a considerably smaller driver size like maybe 7 inch or 6 inch or 5 inch so that the energy that the speaker produces at least does not uh, exceed uh, the dimensions of the room so thank you guys for watching like and share and subscribe if you like uh, the content